Advent has constructed a psionic transmitter in this area, tied directly into their primary network. Our intel suggests destroying it while it's still connected will severely damage their linked systems. Plant the explosives before they have a chance to pull the plug. Hello everyone and welcome to Lawrence Plays, where today I'm going to be taking a look at the first of the daily challenges that um, XCOM 2 offers. And in this one, I've been given a squad of Muton Berserkers to play with, and I've got to go off and destroy this transmitter over here. So, let's see how that goes. I start off in concealment, which is quite an achievement for a bunch of Berserkers. Uh, so I'm just going to so basically come charging up this way, and um, lurk at the front end of this building and see what I can see. What I can see. Okay, so we've got a pod of um, with a couple of priests in it up ahead. That's um, in, I, I, I suppose I can probably deal with priests. We can go over and start punching them or something. But for now, let's just run everybody up forward so we're in range and we can leap out and scare them in the next turn. That seems like a good idea. Um, <laughs> even though I'm pretty sure berserkers can't go in cover, it's still sort of instinctive for me to try and put them into the uh, in, into into bit, bit, put them in behind cover, especially at this point where I don't want to be seen and I'm not quite sure what they're able to see. Uh, let's run one round. Where are they? They are. I can't see them anymore apparently, despite the fact that I could, uh, oh, because I could as I ran up, but I've now moved into positions where where I can't. All right, that's fine. Moving along here then. I think keeping the squad together like this is probably sensible because that way um, they'll be able, all be able to attack whatever pod I, uh, I, I trigger when I, when I trigger one. Oh, and there's a sectoid with them as well. Oh, it spotted me. Damn it. Does that mean they're going to get off the first shot? I can't remember exactly how the rules work. I don't think it does. I think I think I still get to go first. I do. Excellent. Right, so we've got three psionic enemies. They're they're all going to do mind control nonsense on their on their turns, I suspect. Um, so I think let's just start off by coming out here and punching that uh, punching that sectoid in the face because that's basically that's the only attack I've got because we're playing with the berserkers today. Um, the berserkers are also so big that cover isn't an isn't an issue at all, as in because they're too big for cover, so it doesn't it, it doesn't offer them any. There we go. Nice melee vulnerability there from the uh, sectoid. Um, cover doesn't actually offer them any cover because they're too big to be covered. So there's no point in even worrying about it. We might as well just go charging in and do some punching. Now, I do notice this is only a 65% chance. And it's only taking off slightly less than a half the this guy's damage. So we're probably going to need three punches to kill it. Um, <clears throat> I have four... Well, potentially, on average, we would need... Three Three punch, no, yeah, three hits to kill it, and I've got four guys left. So I think we're just going to have to go in and see what we can do because they're too. They can't. They, we we can't sit back and throw grenades. We can't do anything clever because these are berserkers, and they're not remotely clever. So they, that that was a hit though. So I'm, I'm pleased with that. Let's go running in and let's try for another 65% um, hit hit chance. These guys don't have grenades, as far as I'm aware, so I'm happy to sort of, to bunch my um, my berserkers up a bit and just go in and start start thumping basically. And there we go. There's a miss, which is what you what you kind of expect from a 65% chance. So um, I could I could go over and punch that, which would get me an extra turn. I'm not going to worry about turns just yet because I've got three of them at the moment. But I think before we go off and attack the next. Um, Pod. I'm going to need to deal with that. So, yeah, sure. Let's come and do another another devastating blow here. Hopefully, this one will actually be devastating. Oh, nice, a crit. But it's still only your eight, and he's and he's still not dead. So, fortunately, I have one guy left. <laughs> Let's come over and try on with him and see what happens. So. He's gone into sustained. Great. Okay, well, at least that means he's not going to be able to do... I was going to say, at least that means he can't do anything this turn, but apparently he can. I think the Berserkers are just going to have to tank all of the damage in this um, in this run, because, well, they're Berserkers, that's what they're for? But he's going to put one of them in stasis as well, so now I've got one guy who can't do anything. Advent has almost cut off the transmitter from their network. We're running out of time. Okay, well my plan is this time is to use this berserker to blow this thing up. Um, 
But let's try and get this guy killed first. With the camera jumping around as much as it wants to. Nope, that was a miss. Okay. I could really do with the um, the thing that gets you where, you where you do at least one point of damage when you miss. Um, because <laughs> I have such this horrible feeling we're going to have all the berserkers trying to... Okay, there we go. And it was a crit, it crit for nine. Great. So it's actually worse than I was originally thinking. Because it takes... It takes three hits to take one of them down to, to zero health because of the number of health points they've got. And it then takes an, an additional one if they manage to use sustain. And I have to admit, I'm fairly, I am actually fairly new to XCOM, so I don't understand exactly how sustain works and whether it's something that always kicks in or whether it's something that has a chance of kicking in or whether it's something they have to prepare for. There we go. That's given me a third turn, so I'm now back up to now back up to three turns. And long, as long as I can keep finding these things and punching them, then I will be able to carry on. Um, I'll be able to carry on for as long as necessary. And there's one on the other side of the wall there. There's one over here. So we can gradually advance through the um, through the priests, I hope, and take out all of these things as we go. Okay, so there's a five and a disorientated, so that's worth having. Whether it's worth um, attacking the attack attacking lots of different ones, if if I have. If I find another pod that has multiple um, enemies in it, whether it's atta worth attacking lots of them individually and not having any chance of getting in a kill, just to disorientate them all, that might be worth considering. We'll see how that goes with the next the next pod we discover. However, we're still struggling a little bit to deal with this one. This is a bit of a silly mission, really. Uh, the Berserkers are not... <laughs> but they're not very good, actually. Um, as well as not being, as not as, as well as not being, there's not a lot you can do with them tactically because you just have to sort of go running in berserkly and, get, and punch like that. Now this guy can't get in because there just isn't there, there isn't any room left around this priest to go in and punch him again. I could go out and, and and destroy another one of these things, but I suspect there's going to be at least one pod out there in this in this area out here. So if I run run him out there, then he's just he's going to not be able. He's going to he's going to alert another pod, and that's just going to make things worse. So uh, let's just bunch up. The berserkers have a good range. They can move quite a long way on the turn, but they just can't do very much at the end. They can only do they can only punch things, which kind of makes a sort of sense, I admit, because that's what they're for. Right, he's now reorientated, and he's going to try and mind control one of my berserkers. Which one's it going to be? Is it going to work? No, it looks like it's... Nope, it's been resisted. Excellent. So now I guess it's punching time again. Okay, so we need to we need to go and get some more time on the uh, on, on the clock at this point. So let's let's run this guy out. Even, even though this is almost certainly going to alert another um, another pod, let's run him out to here. Yeah, there we go. There's another another identical pod. Okay, this is problematic. My, the the berserkers just aren't capable of doing enough damage per turn. Oh, he's hiding behind the pillars. If that helps, the berserkers just aren't capable of doing enough damage per turn to deal with one of these pods in a in a reasonable amount of time <clears throat> because their hit chances are so low. <laughs> They're just not very good. Um, please, just punch him. And hit him this time and kill him. That'd be good, wouldn't it? Three. What? Yeah. So that was the sort of the, the graze that I was saying I would like to happen in the future. So that was that was a, that was a oh, it was a dodge as opposed to a miss. I suppose that's the difference, isn't it? Won't someone rid me of this meddlesome priest, as they say? Hang on. That was a, oh, he's gone. He's gone into sustainment again. Okay. So in that case, <clears throat> I've got at least one left. Let's bring him out here to go and punch this. Uh, yeah, to go and punch this thing. Or to do it through the wall, apparently, because I misclicked. I mean, it, it, it works. I'll, I'll, I'll take that, I guess. Um, but it's not quite what I wanted. Now we've got one guy left. Um, we can't see any of the enemies out here. Let's run him to here. And then he can have a look over there and decide what to do. Because I think the Berserkers are tough. He's got a lot of health. I'm not losing any... Um, any game points for uh, getting them attack for getting them hurt. So let's just run him over here and punch this guy at the back. Or at least, you know, try to. The two thirds chance means he probably is going to miss. Yeah, like that. <clears throat> okay, now we'll let the aliens have a go, I suppose. So he comes out of stasis and runs away, which I mean, I can't fault him for. It's kind of sensible. Ah. 
Sectoid is doing some mind control stuff and has missed with it. So Berserkers seem to be quite hard to mind control, which is nice. What's this Priest with? Priest is going to go over there and oh, he's going to put that Berserker into stasis. Helpful. Stasis, on the other hand, seems to hit much more reliably. So I'll we'll, um, we'll have to. <laughs> I don't have a, a better plan, really. We're just going to have to carry on trying to punch them into submission, I think. What have we got here? This is well, Holy Warrior, isn't it? This one. Um, and I think that basically that, that gives the sectoid a load of uh, basically a load of shielding. Uh, my scoring has started to decrease already because I've taken too long to do this. So maybe the way to complete this with the best score is to just go charging straight through, trigger all of the pods and not worry about it, and then wreck this thing or hack this and whatever it is we're supposed to be doing to this thing over here without worrying about them. Perhaps that's what I should be doing. I, I, I don't really know. I do know that there's a very, very wounded priest somewhere back here that it'd be nice to deal with. There's one behind here that's doing the um, the holy warrior thing on that guy. So, I mean, it'd be good to come along to here and give him a punch. But I suspect I can't do that. I probably need to move to the point... I need someone to move to where they can see him. And then I can move in with the, with the ability to do the punch, which is a bit of a problem. Um, <clears throat> because I can't get anyone to a place where they're going to be able to see without using up a good chunk of their move. So let's move, let's move him to here, like that. They also move a bit slowly, which is annoying. Oh, he's purple. That's actually really convenient. He's found the he's found this one who I want to who I want to now finish off because he's down to basically no health. So let's do the let's do the let's do this and try and kill him. There we go. That's what we want. Yes, you can roar at him if you want. That's fine too. And now does that that means that some of you guys. Maybe you can... Do you have the range? You, you don't quite have the range to get to that one, or to that one, which is a bit annoying. Um, I, I think it's worth taking out the uh, the priests before the sectoids, because that way we... That, that way the sectoid... If we can kill the priest while it's doing this beamy thing, I'm pretty sure that kills the sectoid as well. And even if we can't, it stops the priest doing the Holy Warrior buff on the sectoid. And my main limiting factor here isn't how much damage my guys can tank, because they've got huge amounts of health, and they're... Generally seem, to, generally seem to be pretty tough, and the enemies most of the time seem to be interested only in um, uh, only in, in doing psionic nonsense rather than actually attacking them. Okay, I guess you can go over the top of there if you really want. So, I think trying to find find a way to do get take destroy the enemies with the minimum amount of moves required is the way forwards, which is a rather odd way to play. I will admit that, but I think given given what we've got going on here, I think I think it's the way to go. Oh, there's another one of these to destroy. Let's do that then. Oh, and there's another one over there as well, which I had spotted, but he didn't have the range for. Now this guy... Is there anything you can punch? You, you could punch the sectoid. And given that you, you won't be able to do anything else, and you've got an 80% chance there, it's not going to be a fatality. But given the complete lack of anything else that we can do with this guy, let's send him over there to do that. Yeah. So it's taken out a shield and, and done a bit of damage to his health. I'm not convinced it was worth it, but also that guy couldn't get anywhere else. So, you know, why not? Sectoid is running away and doing psionic nonsense. Oh, goody, it's brought another enemy back. However, this isn't the end of the world, because if I kill the, if I kill the um, sectoid, it'll definitely take out the zombie. This is a ridiculous level of stacking of um, psionic nonsense that's going on here. So what have we got here now? We've got um, let's, let, let, let's look let's look at this look at this one. This guy is applying holy warrior to the sectoid, so, um, and the sectoid is then applying has then brought this zombie back to life, and then this. Um, priest over here is applying Holy Warrior to the zombie. So, if we can kill this priest in this turn without it having a chance to go into sustain, I believe that means that then the sectoid will die, which means the zombie will die. So, I think that's worth going for. Let's try, let, let's try and take this priest out and just see how things go. It's certainly not worth attacking the zombie, that much I'm sure of. There we go, that's a seven, so we need 
two more of those, basically. And uh, we've alerted another pod, for goodness sake. This is the other problem with using Berserkers, which only have a melee attack, is you have to push forward in order to be able to attack, well, anything, of, of quite likely, uh, rather, to, to alert an, an additional, additional enemies, which is frustrating. Uh, no, from that side, like I said. Two hits in a row. That's good, and it's a, it's a, it's a sixty-six percent hit chance, isn't it? So uh, that means that logically we would expect no, we wouldn't expect this one to miss uh, because that's not how probabilities work. But out of the three three attacks we're doing, we'd expect one of them to miss. Fortunately, I have a fourth berserker who might be able to come over and hopefully land the finishing blow. That would be nice, wouldn't it? Nope, that's another miss. Great. And, of course, the other guy's in stasis, so he doesn't get to do anything. Uh, we've now got the zombie over here that's going to come and do some punching, probably. This guy is too busy doing... He's done so much psionic stuff, he's just going to run around in circles. Or maybe he's going to take a pot shot. Who knows? He's running away because he's a coward. So is he. I mean, I, to, to an extent, I can't criticise them too much because it's a sensible thing to do. But on the other hand, it's kind of annoying. Okay, the sectoid is still trying mind control, even though that apparently doesn't work against Berserkers. I think I'm just going to run, run one of them in there and attempt to finish the uh, the basic mission, and then worry about mop-up afterwards. Especially now, I think we've got to the point where we've we're basically on top of the um, on top of the objective. So I don't think they're alerting any more. Uh, uh, there's going to be any more pods to alert. Everybody is already awake. And we've got another stasis. Yes, another stasis. Lovely. At least they only seem to be stasising one units per turn. It could be a lot worse. Crit for five. That's not ideal. Right. So, I had I had a plan. My plan is first to go over and... Um, no, not that one. Not that one. Yeah. Let's try and finish this guy. Okay, it wasn't the one I had... I didn't have the one I selected. I thought I did. So that's a miss. Okay. There we go. Oh, and it's done, it's done the um, sustain thing. That's really annoying. Um, it, whilst it does cut the uh, sectoid off and makes the sectoid an easy kill, it means that it didn't. It did, the sectoid didn't get just magically killed by the fact that it's it's um it, it bond mate controller whatever you want to call it died. So I'm going to run him in there. He can't do anything this turn. No, out of actions. Can't do anything this turn. Uh, it says one over there, which is a worry. So uh, whilst I would like to go and kill that sectoid, I think I've actually got to go and destroy this thing. It puts the berserker right in the middle of everything of all of the enemies, but it's a berserker. It kind of doesn't matter. And with the amount of psionic stuff that these enemies seem to be doing, it also sort of doesn't matter because the, the, my guys aren't taking any damage. They're just getting occasionally shot at. Uh, sorry, my guys aren't taking any damage. They're just getting psionic attacks and put into stasis every so often like that. Which kind of doesn't matter. It doesn't harm them. It just slows me down a little bit. It means I can't do as much attack as I would. These mind controls could be dangerous if they ever manage to make one stick. But so far... Mutons just seem to not care. <laughs> and none of them are bothering to shoot, he says, as this one probably is about to. We'll see. No, they're just running around in circles. This is a weird... Okay, we're going to get two set stasis effects this turn, by the looks of it. That's a shame. Now, as long as... Yeah, I was going to say, as long as this guy doesn't put the one who's by the... Um... Oh, is he actually going to shoot? He is going to shoot. Wow. Did a fair amount of damage when he, when he took that shot. He's taken a, a noticeable chunk off that guy's health, although part of that was being punched by the zombie in the last turn. Yeah, like that. Right, so, you, plant the X4, job done. Okay, so we've now completed the mission, we don't have to worry about the timer anymore. Um, we do have to worry about all of the um, psionic stuff that's going on. So, is that the, where, where, where's the sectoid gone, is my first question. Because that's the one that's doing, that's the one that's keeping the zombie up, and is now weakened because we've cut off his holy warrior. So let's come back out here with you, because you've got, still got two moves left. Yeah, planting X4 is a free action, apparently. So now you can go over here and you can destroy this sectoid because they're easy. It's an 80% chance. So fingers crossed. And a melee vulnerability so you can bang, kill the, kill the sectoid like that. We get the enemy kill points. And you get 100 points for it because I've taken so long to actually get to this stage. And that takes out the zombie as well, which is handy. Things can calm down a little bit over here. We'll get you Because you're injured, we'll get you to come over and fin try and finish this guy off. It is, as usual, only a 65% chance, which isn't great, but we're going to try anyway. There we go. Pumbled into the ground. So that's another one gone. Now I feel like we're actually making some progress on this mission. You. Um, I mean, who, who do we want to beat up next? They're all they're, they're all much of a muchness. They're all the, 
<clears throat> they're all at full health. They're all identical units. There is a there is a sectoid around the corner here, but it's being um, psionicized at the moment. So there's no point in attacking it. We might so let's come over here and attack this guy because he's the one who's giving Holy Warrior to the sectoid. So if we can knock him out. Well, we can't. But if we could, <laughs> then the sector would become a little bit easier to kill. So they're actually starting to shoot now, which is interesting. They're um, they're actually doing some damage to my berserkers, which uh, makes a makes for a change of pace, I suppose. Um, but to be honest, running in there isn't going to make any difference. We, we we can go after you without any problems. Ooh, this might be difficult. this might be bad. <clears throat> Ooh, dear, I've actually lost one of them. That's um that's unfortunate. Um, but I mean, what can you do? I'm just gonna have to. There's, I'm gonna, I'm gonna just stick with, with with my previous plan because I don't see any reason not to. Essentially, we need to, this this priest is the one that's most gonna be most useful to kill, or possibly knock unconscious. Ah, if he's unconscious, does that mean? No, it hasn't broken that connection. So we've still got a holy warrior going on over there. So let's see if we can. Can we attack? Can we attack the unconscious priest? That's my question. No, we can't. It's interesting. So even though it's still able to, still able to cast the uh, the Holy Warrior on on this sectoid, we can't do. We can't actually stop it. That's kind of frustrating. Let's go after this priest now, um, because I. What? That was not what I said to do. I was disorientated, I suppose, and done a small amount of damage. Okay. Well, or in that case, since I, I misclicked there, let's let's just finish it off. Um, all right, through the window then, if you really want. Okay. So that's that sectoid gone. Now there's just one and a half priests left because we've got one that's still up and uh, up and active this one over here and uh, we've got the one in here that's unconscious and we can't we don't appear to be able to beat it up while or kill it while it's unconscious which is a, a little bit unfortunate but uh, oh well although apparent I don't understand why I can't go after that one I've got plenty of move let's move to here so you can see it and then see if see if I can go after that bridge. this is this is more for my curiosity than because I think this is necessarily good tactics yeah, it's w weird. It was, it was showing. As you see, if I, if I, if I, if I put the put the cursor around here, then he, then you can see in the target preview we've got two enemies showing up, but I can't attack one of them. So, and it's a miss because of course it is. It's, <laughs> there's not. I, I, I don't see what I can do to make the berserkers' um, accuracy any better. They just, they just miss all the time because they're a bit rubbish. Probably because they're they're meant to be they're they're an enemy unit really and you don't and, and if they were oh there's another one down there who I'd forgotten about okay oh well that doesn't really change anything but yes I guess I guess if the um, if the berserkers could do more damage then they'd be just a bit too overpowered and it wouldn't be and uh, they wouldn't they wouldn't be they wouldn't be fair essentially okay so we're gonna we're gonna go after this priest because they're they're functionally identical they're both at full health and this one is closer so all of the, all of my guys are going to be able to get to it. So we'll do a, a blow from there, that side. And we've got another one that's unconscious. And we can't attack him when he's unconscious. That's ridiculous. How far can he move? Okay, he can move to here. I'm worried that these guys are going to wake up again and that's going to count as not, as not having finished the mission. Um, let's run over to here. I mean, if I'd known that blow was going to be a knockout, I'd have started with the ones who were a bit further away, but, um, oh well. It just means it's going to take an extra turn or so, I suppose. And we get another stasis attack on the Berserker. I mean, sure, you can do that, I guess. It's going to, it's only going to, it might, it might save his life for an extra turn, but it's not going to make an enormous amount of difference because I've still got three, I don't know, four other guys around somewhere, I think. Um, it just comes down to whether we can actually get these hits in, really, doesn't it? And apparently we can't. So, yeah. What can you do? So it's been interesting and and different playing with the uh, Berserkers instead of the um, it's instead of actual soldiers. I'm not sure I'm a great fan of it. Um, but we'll... Uh, Ooh, a crit. Eight. That's a lot of damage. Um, I'm not a fan of this because they they just they they have no flexibility whatsoever. Uh, it makes them a bit. It makes the the, the um, their attacks very very limited. There's no tactics. It's just sort of run in, tank the damage, and punch the enemies, and miss most of the time. So, like that. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm just gonna have to keep keep at it, and eventually 
somebody will hopefully manage to get a hit. Hopefully. Come on. It's all up to you, Berserker number. I don't even know what number you are. Well, that's that was a seven, so it's put him into sustain. So he's not going to be able to do anything this turn. Or he's, we're not going to be able to kill him this turn anyway. He's going to magically recover and be able to run away. Okay. And he's going to try and mind control someone. <laughs> the... I feel like Sustain is a bit of an overpowered ability here. He's been able to... Um, it's protected him, but there hasn't, doesn't seem to have been any significant debuff, apart from the fact that, you know, he's got no health left. If it, it would... If it meant he then didn't get to do anything in his next turn because of it, then that'd sort of be okay with it. But that seemed a little bit un, um, unbalanced. So, some of my troops were uh, uninjured, which is nice. Some of them survived, which is nice. I get some points from those. And... Um, and yes, I've just killed an enemy. These, these come in in a very funny order. But I think that means the mission is now completed. I've got 15 minutes remaining as well, which is quite nice. Um, and apparently another enemy killed. I'm not sure where that one came from, but I, I, I won't complain. So, that's that completed. Um, 18,000 points uh, out of a maximum 33,000. That's not brilliant. Maybe uh, maybe the correct way to do this would be to just go charging straight up the middle, destroy the uh, transmitter, and then um, and then worry about the enemies in the next uh, in the next uh, for the rest of it. But I'd be worried that they'd all just all get put into stasis, and you wouldn't be able to do anything useful. So, I don't know. But thank you for coming along for this video. I shall uh, continue doing these sort of little one-offs with the uh, with the ra with the random challenges, and um, so check back in the future. There'll be more of these. I shall be streaming XCOM 2 on Wednesday and streaming Factorio on Monday. So I hope to see you then. Thanks again and goodbye.